just hang up. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good to be with you uh, today. Uh, on this, the 23rd of February, the sun is shining. Um, we are um, enjoying some uh, some sunny weather and warm weather, so we're grateful about that. Uh, today, uh, good to be with you live for two minutes. This is strange. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm wondering if I, oh, there we go, get some people on. Um, as we uh, gather together this morning, they always have new stuff going, you know, on on this on these pages, and uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. New tips. Uh, so um, I see four of you on this morning. I haven't seen any comments yet. There's some weird things going on over there in the comments, but. Uh, good to be with those who are here with us. I know I have uh, some folks on the on the phone as well uh, this morning. I think that was working. Uh, hopefully, we'll get uh, all the way through today um, as we uh, as we uh, spend some time on that. Uh, so we'll just wait a few seconds for our feed to populate and see if we can get anyone else on this morning. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, it's crazy um, how uh, how nice and sunny it is out today, and uh, how things have changed in a week. And so, hopefully, in ne by next week, most of the snow will be gone. Um, why don't we get going uh, here this morning um, as we have people continue to join on? Um, I don't know who's on. I can't see this morning. My comment section isn't working for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know how that that does but um, I should probably quit messing with it um, but we're uh, we're continuing our look at the at the book of Acts this morning and uh, kind of the historical aspects of what's going on with the story of Paul but uh, really the underlying thing there uh, for Paul as we th see throughout his mis mi mission and ministry is this idea of bringing the gospel, the good news, to the world, to the Gentiles, Jews and to the Gentiles. But they, this idea, the gospel, that Jesus died and rose again to make us right with God. Uh, that Jesus came to make people who were dead alive again. Uh, that's the central message of Paul, the central message of the gospel, that Jesus fulfilled the promises of the Old Testament he became the sacrificial lamb who paid the price for the sins of this world through his death and resurrection. His re resurrection proves uh, proves that what he said was true. It proves that the sacrifice that was made was accepted by the Father. And it proves that those who die in Christ will rise to eternal life. And so this, uh, this message that Jesus died and rose again is confusing to the world, but it is the central message of our Christian faith. And it was the message that Paul was sent out into the world uh, to bring, that we were, have been reconciled to God. We have been made right with God through Jesus' death and resurrection. So this question I have for you this morning is, how's your hearing today? Hopefully you can hear me. Can you hear me now? Uh, it's interesting today you see a lot of those people with, their bu with the buds in their ears walking around, and uh, they can't really hear what you're saying. I know Apple has a nice feature when you take one out. Uh, the music stops or the phone call or whatever so that you can hear what the other person is saying. Uh, but the question for us this morning is who are we really listening to? Are we listening to the world um, that seeks to divide, a world that seeks to cause us to live in fear and uncertainty and doubt? You know, who are we, we listening to? A world that, that tempts us uh, to live for ourselves, to live in isolation, um, you know, what, who are, or what are we, are we listening to? And today, uh, we see in the, uh, the verses that, that both Isaiah and Paul were people who were listening to the voice of God. They were hearing the good news and it was impacting their lives. It was making a difference in, in their, in their lives. And I believe as those who have heard the good news, the gospel, that we have been reconciled to God, been made right with God through Christ that we want to be people who listen and respond. 
And so we hear these verses today from Isaiah 6, chapter 8. This is Isaiah speaking. He said, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me, send me. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Uh, Isaiah had, uh, had heard the voice of the Lord. Uh, and obviously even prior to this, as he makes this declaration to go, uh, he had heard good news. Uh, he knew who this God was and the promises that he had made. He knew that he was reconciled to him, made right with God. And so he said, send me. I want to bring this, this message to others. He was inspired to be sent out. Uh, and uh, as he, he heard... Uh, the message and promise of God. Paul, uh, the, writing, the author of the second verse from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, So we are ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. So Paul, uh, again, is one who has heard the voice of God. He was one who was sent with a message. Uh, the message of, of reconciliation, that we have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, through his death and, death and resurrection, so that, and here's the key, uh, we can be ambassadors. We can be people who are seeking to bring reconciliation into our world. As those who have been reconciled to God, made right with God, we seek to bring this into our world. That's what we pray, that kingdom come. We want what God has uh, to, to be a part of our lives so that we can bring it to others. And what does that mean, that being reconcilers? Well, it means um, being made right uh, with, with others through the willingness to forgive as we have been forgiven. Uh, the willingness to uh, give people breaks because they mess up the benefit of the doubt uh, when they say or do things that may be misunderstood, which really can happen e so easily amid, uh, amid our texting when you can't see a person's face, you can't answer, uh, respond with follow-up questions real easily. So we get mistakes, we, we, we get misunderstandings. And so uh, are we talking this, this, this week about committing to community? We need to commit to need community to be together so that we can practice what it means to be people of rec reconciliation. Practicing within the church, the body of Christ, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, whom we love and care about and trust, um, who are we are willing to give the benefit of the doubt, uh, so that we can actually live that out in our day-to-day -day life as we are ambassadors for Christ, as we go into the world. Now, here's the thing that's not easy. It wasn't easy for Isaiah. It wasn't easy for Paul, uh, as we see today in our reading from the book of Acts. And we are in Acts chapter 25, verse 16. And what we're seeing here today uh, is this story playing out. You remember Paul was taken captive by the Roman centurion. He was brought before Felix, who, who put him in prison and talked, had conversations with Paul for two years when Felix's term was up, he was, he was placed by the, 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 by the Roman government. Uh, uh, Festus then became the procurer of, of Paul, uh, and Paul then appealed to, to Rome, uh, that he would be sent to Rome, because Festus didn't know if he should send him back to Jerusalem to have a, a, a court hearing there, and Paul says, no, I've already been there, already done that. It's time to move on. I need to go to Rome. So today we pick up uh, this kind of political uh, uh, connection between Festus, who's the Roman pure procurer of that region in, 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 in Israel, uh, Palestine as they would call it then, and Herod Agrippa, King Herod, who is the Jewish kind of ruling authority there. Uh, and they used to butt heads, but they, they also, the Romans and the, the, the Jews, uh, you know, uh, Herod Agrippa uh, was trying to, you know, pad his political resume, so he wanted to be on good terms with, with Rome. And so now he comes, 
and he plays into, gives his opinion about what they should do with Paul. So Acts 25, 16, 25, 16. Um, I'll start at verse 13. It says, a few days later, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to pay their respects to Festus. Since they were spending many days there, Festus discussed Paul's case with, king, with the king. He said, there is a man here whom Felix left, in, uh, left as a prisoner. When I went to Jerusalem, the chief priests and elders of the Jews brought charges against him and asked that he be condemned. Now here's where it picks up, 16 uh, to 26.1. I told them that it is not the Roman custom to hand over any man before he faced his accusers and had an opportunity to defend himself against their charges. When they came here with me, I did not delay the case, but convened the court the next day and ordered the man be brought in. When his accusers got up to speak, they did not charge him with any of the crimes they had expected. Instead, they had some points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a dead man named Jesus, who Paul claimed was alive. I was at a loss how to investigate such matters, so I asked if he would be willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial there on these charges. When Paul made his appeal to be held over for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held and I, until I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear this man myself. He replied, tomorrow you will hear him. The next day, Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and entered the audience room where the high-ranking of officers and leading men, with the high-ranking officers and the leading men of the city. At the command of Festus, Paul was brought in. Festus said, King Agrippa and all who are present with us, you see this man. The whole Jewish community has petitioned me about him in Jerusalem and here in Caesarea, shouting that he ought not live any longer. I found he had done nothing deserving of death, but because he made his appeal to the emperor, I decided to send him to Rome. But I have nothing definite to write to his majesty about him. Therefore, I have brought him before all of you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that as a result of this investigation, I may have something to write. For I think it is unreasonable to send on a prisoner without specifying the charges against him. Then King Agrippa said to Paul, You have permission to speak for yourself. So Paul motioned with his hand and began his defense. All right, so Paul, uh, Paul was one who was reconciled to God through Christ. He heard the voice of God, and he sought to be an ambassador to Christ. Uh, as those who have been reconciled to God through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who have been made right with God, we seek to bring reconciliation to our world. We seek to make things right. Now, how do we do that? Is it by power and force? No, it is by love. And as we've talked about it, Jesus, this is the method Jesus used. His definition of love was that of invitation to invite in and also then to challenge. Uh, that is true love, agape love, uh, to inv invite, to bring in, and to challenge so that uh, people can become uh, the people that God has created them to be, people who are with Jesus so that we can be like uh, a Jesus. And so um, we are now called to bring this reconciliation to the world, uh, and that starts as we commit to community, as I talked about earlier, uh, that where we can practice being people of love and forgiveness, <laughs> healing and restoration uh, as we seek to bring reconciliation, and then taking it out, uh, out into the world. Because this is good news. This is what we need to hear. This is what our world needs to hear, that we have been made right with our Maker, our Creator, the God uh, who calls us His own, we have been made right through Jesus' death and resurrection. And uh, because of that, we can be made right with one another. We don't have to live in the division uh, that, sin, that sin brings. 
into our lives and into our world. Now, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. You go through some real hassles. Paul was going through those hassles right now. Uh, but it's so uh, such a blessing uh, we can, when we can live as the people of God, as we can be ambassadors uh, for Jesus. And that's what we are. Uh, and in this, this season of Lent, we commit to community, being with each other, uh, so that we can be with Jesus and be like Jesus. Jesus. We've got some prayers uh, today for Cindy Albrecht. Uh, Cindy is hospitalized. That's Dale's sister. She's been dealing with a lot of health issues for a number of years. So we pray for her. We pray for Walter Shaw. Walter, a uh, young boy from our uh, Sunday school and from our church uh, who is diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, we pray that he would, that the Lord would be with him in this time and watch over him. Uh, for uh, those who are dealing with health issues, Tom and Michelle, we pray for Rich. Uh, some prayers um, of thanksgiving uh, for Laura, uh, Allison Wimmer's sister-in-law, who we've been prayed for, have been praying for for a number of years, or a number of weeks, excuse me, um, with her battle with COVID, uh, is uh, heading into rehab and uh, is making some strides. She was able to walk uh, last week, so we're thankful uh, for that. I can't see any other comments up this morning. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened with that. Uh, but we will uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we are here for your glory, to tell others about you, and to care for them. Give us ears to hear and give us the courage to do your will. Guide us and protect us as we answer the call again today. Lord, we thank you uh, for this time uh, together that we can be people who commit to community as we recognize uh, how we need that and that structure in our lives so that we can actually be with Jesus uh, because it's when, we're be when we are with Jesus and the body of Christ, uh, a fellow believers, that we can be more and more like Jesus. And that is our goal in this season of Lent, to be more and more uh, like Jesus. Um, who, through his death and resurrection, has reconciled us to God. And we seek to be people of reconciliation as we seek to practice that in the church and as we seek to carry that to the world. Uh, today we pray, Lord, for Cindy uh, in uh, her battles with health issues. We ask your hand of favor on her. We pray for Walter and his family, that he would be protected and they would be protected from the, the virus. Uh, for Tom and Michelle and their continuous health struggles, also for Rich, Aldrich in his battle with pancreatic cancer, uh, we pray for complete and full healing for him. Uh, Lord, uh, there are others uh, that we pray for. We ask your hand a blessing upon them, that your care would be with them, that they would know that they are never alone, uh, that you are with them. Uh, and uh, that's the promise that you have, have made, that you made us part of community. Uh, even when we can't gather, uh, Lord, and be with others, we know we belong, and we belong to you. Pray for a prayer of thanksgiving for Laura uh, and her re slow recovery from uh, COVID-19. Uh, we just ask, Lord, that you would continue to be with her and watch over her. These are difficult and long days, no doubt. Uh, Lord, uh, for this and a whole lot more, uh, we're thankful uh, for your good gifts to us. And we ask that you would go with us this day. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good to be with you all uh, this morning. Uh, thankful uh, that we can gather together like this. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we're going to practice a little bit of uh, Zoom, Facebook Live, I think, uh, just so we're ready to go for tomorrow night uh, as we gather for, um, for our, our, from our home to yours, our Latin devotional. Um, we will do it via a Zoom link and then also... Uh, we will stream it to Facebook Live uh, tomorrow night. So you're welcome to join us for that as we gather together. All right, you guys have a great uh, great day. Uh, good to be with you. And uh, enjoy the sun, the February sun. Uh, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.